Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli counter-terrorist special operators arrested a senior Hamas terror cell responsible for efforts to develop rocket fire capabilities in the West Bank. Following violent clashes by Eritrean migrants in southern Tel Aviv, the government pledges to implement a number of measures to include deportation. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during a trilateral summit with leaders of Cyprus and Greece reveals prospects of normalization with Saudi Arabia. Israel's war on terror persists while Jerusalem prepares for prospects of wider escalation. IDF, FISA and Border Police Special Operations Forces conducted counter-terror activity throughout the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria and the Jordan Valley overnight, during the course of which a total of 16 suspected terror operatives were successfully apprehended. During operational activity in the village of Tamun, suspects opened fire and hurled explosive devices toward the Israeli forces, who responded with crowd dispersal means. In tandem, in the village of Kubar, a violent riot was also reported to which the Israeli forces responded with crowd dispersal means. And while damage was caused to a military vehicle, thankfully, no injuries were reported. Separately, during today's morning hours, the ISA directed IDF commandos and border police special operators toward a residential structure deep inside the Palestinian refugee camp of Jenin. The three wanted suspects included senior Hamas operatives who were allegedly responsible for a long list of terror attacks in recent months. According to a joint statement by the IDF, FISA and Border Police Spokespersons Units, during the operational activity, a number of armed militants were spotted attempting to flee the scene, while other militants opened fire toward the Israeli forces who responded with live fire. Hits were identified among the Palestinian militants, while in contrast, no injuries were reported among the Israeli troops. It is worth noting that one of the apprehended suspects, namely Abdullah Hassan Muhammad Tsubeh, was known to be the terrorist responsible for efforts to develop rocket fire capabilities in a northern Samaria region. Meanwhile, in the Lebanese capital Beirut, Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah hosted the head of the Iranian proxy, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Ziad al Nahala, and the deputy head of Hamas's political bureau, Saleh al Aruri, amid increased efforts by the three internationally recognized terror groups to unite in their common cause against Israel. According to Hamas spokesman Hazim Qasim, the trilateral meeting aimed to express the deep-rooted coordination between the factions of resistance in the region and the backdrop of Israel's threats to assassinate their leaders. Moreover, the meeting sought to make it abundantly clear to Israel, amid the escalation in the West Bank, that it stands in the face of a united front of a resistance axis that has the capacity to reach a joint decision if Israel were to act upon its threats. Turning to southern Tel Aviv, where violent riots erupted on Saturday when supporters and opponents of the Eritrean government clashed against one another, prompting renewed deliberations in Jerusalem over prospective deportation. Similar to violent events that were cited in Norway, Sweden, Germany and elsewhere around the world, the Eritrean government of President Isaiah Safwarki sought to hold gatherings for its expat supporters marking the country's Revolution Day. Nevertheless, opponents of the Eritrean government opted to quell these celebrations despite commitments made to police. <laughs> גם של מתנגדי השלטון, גם של תומכי השלטון באריתריאה נקבע כי מסיבת תומכי השלטון יהיו פה במועדון שנמצא בסמוך לרחוב המסגר והמחאה של מתנגדי השלטון יהיו בגינת הרציפים באופן כזה שניצור ביניהם ההפרדה, הדברים היו בהסכמה, ניתנו רישיונות בהתאם לצערי, החל משעות הבוקר הצדדים לא עמדו בהתחייבויות 
לא עמדו בתנאי הרישיון שניתן להם, הגיעו לפה בשעת הבוקר המוקדמות במטרה אה, לסכל את האירוע. אנחנו נערכנו פה בכוחות מתוגברים החל משעות הבוקר, גם במהלך הלילה, מכיוון שנכנסו ידיעות שהם רוצים אה, לשרוף את המועדון. בכל מקרה הייתה פה היערכות אה, מהבוקר, לצערי הגיעו מאות של אה, יוצאי האריתריאה, והם קיבלו אחת. The police district commander further highlighted that the opponents of the Eritrean government were responsible for starting the clashes, winning 30 police officers and over 140 Eritrean nationals. Meanwhile, in response to the violent riots, Israeli Prime Minister B. Netanyahu held a special ministerial committee in Jerusalem yesterday, during which a series of measures were adopted including administrative detention, revoking work permits and allocating more funds to remove thousands of Eritrean nationals from Israel by the year's end. Moreover, ahead of departure to Cyprus for a trilateral meeting between the leaders of Jerusalem, Nicosia and Athens, Prime Minister Netanyahu emphasized that a red line was crossed. What happened איחולי החלמה לשוטרים שנפצעו, ואנחנו ביקשנו היום בוועדת שרים מיוחדת שהקמתי כמה צעדים מהירים, כולל גירוש אלה שמתומכי המשטר שהשתתפו בהתפרעויות הללו, אין להם כמובן שום טענה של פליטות, הם תומכים במשטר הזה. אם הם כל כך תומכים במשטר הזה, יואילו לחזור לארץ מוצאם. נתניהו went on to address his trip to Cyprus. אני יוצא לפגישה עם מנהיגי קפריסין ויוון. אני מזכיר לכם שב-2016 הקמנו את הברית המזרח תיכונית, מזרח הים התיכון. הברית הזאת היא הצלחה גדולה מאוד. היא הביאה לשיפור עצום גם ביחסים הכלכליים, יחסי התיירות. אני חושב שעד עכשיו בטח מיליוני ישראלים ביקרו גם ביוון וגם בקפריסין. היא הביאה לשיפור ביחסי הביטחון, וכמובן אנחנו דנים גם בנושא האנרגיה. בנושא האנרגיה יש החלטות שאנחנו נצטרך לקבל בקרוב, כתוצאה מזה שעשינו עוד מהפך, וזה הוצאת הגז מהמים. דבר שאגב, כמו הגדר, התנגדו לו יריבינו הפוליטיים, וגם אנשי מקצוע התנגדו, אבל התעקשנו. זה נותן לנו לא רק את צורכי הגז של מדינת ישראל, זה נותן לנו גם את היכולת לייצא לאירופה. יש לנו כמה וכמה נתיבים לייצא. במפגש הזה אני הולך להתרכז על שניים מהנתיבים הללו, שזה צינור הגז המזרחי או מפעל להנזלה בקפריסין, כדי לאפשר לנו לייצא גז מסיבי לאירופה, מה שממלא את קופות המדינה. אלה הנושאים שעומדים על הפרק. Meanwhile, in the Cypriot capital, the Israeli premier initially held separate bilateral meetings with the president of Cyprus, Nikos Christodoulides, and Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis, respectively. Subsequently, the three leaders held a trilateral meeting, which focused on a wide range of issues. This is, without doubt, a dynamic strategic alliance between partners of democratic values with shared objectives, and which invests in a joint vision of stability, prosperity, and security in our region and beyond. During uh, our discussions, we review the progress achieved in multiple areas of cooperation, which have been developing all these years. We reaffirm our aim to intensify collaboration in fields such as energy, security, defense, economy, as well as uh, academia and our diasporas. While well, speaking about collaborations on erecting an electric connector from Israel via Cyprus to Greece, as well as methods to deliver natural gas, which Netanyahu spoke about before traveling to Cyprus as well, the Israeli premier also highlighted prospects of Jerusalem normalizing its relations with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia that would essentially open the door to new substantive opportunities. I think there's something else that could develop and we discuss it at great length, uh, there is now the possibility that we might have the expansion of the Abraham Accords to uh, normalization uh, with uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, all three countries view that as a great possibility, but they also see that this could lead to a connection between India, the Arabian Peninsula, uh, Israel, Cyprus, Greece, 
Europe. There is a geographic connection, but it could be also something that would lead to uh, uh, many, many rewards for our peoples and for our countries. Uh, so I think we all see eye to eye on that. Greek Premier Kyriakos Mitsotakis, for his part, highlighted his keen interest of having India join the trilateral forum. We had again today the opportunity to discuss uh, uh, many fields of, uh, of common uh, interest you touched upon, uh, many of those, but also the, the potential of um, uh, expanding uh, this trilateral partnership uh, to possibly include in a three plus one format other countries, not just the US, with which we are already working very, very closely, but other countries such as uh, India, which, as the Prime Minister of Israel pointed out, would have a natural uh, interest in looking towards uh, uh, the West and expanding its uh, geopolitical but also trade footprint uh, in our uh, part of the world. Prime Minister Mitsotakis further stressed that deepening alliance between the three countries while underscoring the vital importance of close security collaboration between Athens and Jerusalem. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. Separately, I would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shavua Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.